Oh, hey. Hey. Here with uh, Pete Halverson from good old sunny California. We're out at Photo Field Trip and this is the Photo Report. I'm just going to be talking with you about um, who you are, what you do, and how you do it. But um, could you just give a little intro on sort of how you would describe your photography? Yeah. Um, I shoot commercial, um, advertising, and travel photography. Um, and have done it for about eight years. Amazing. Yeah. And um, so how did you end up getting into that world? Because, and, and we're going to talk a little bit probably about social and how that's played into some things yeah. as well. But um, how did you get into doing that specifically? Um, I was actually, um, I was an actor before that. And, um, and then I put that on hold once my daughter was born and I was a stay-at-home dad. And I'd always played with cameras and I, had a, um, I went to film school originally. So I had basic knowledge of, of, of cameras and shooting and, and composition and telling stories uh, through images. And so once I was a stay-at-home dad for the first uh, 18 months of her life, um, I started shooting a lot more. Um, I started shooting her, I started shooting um, when I take her out on outings. I started um, enjoying um, shooting landscapes as well as just capturing uh, interesting moments of, of her. And um, that age-old story, people are going, "Oh, your photos are great! You know, oh, you you really should take photos." I'm like, "Okay, yeah, whatever." You know, I, I love love hearing that. Uh, and then it really clicked for me uh, one night. I was I was sitting down with two two of my friends who were both uh, successful uh, fashion photographers, and they said, "Pete, you really do have an, a good eye that that you can't teach that. Um, you should look into it. You should you should look into uh, maybe start doing some stock photography or some fine art stuff." Uh, and so right after that, um, I decided to make the plunge and, and um, do that full time and uh, commit to it. And um, so yeah, and I started doing fine art stuff mainly um, just because it was you pave your own way. You yeah. not, not need to get hired by anybody. You can shoot your stuff and sell it. And um, so I started doing that in local galleries around Manhattan Beach. So you would shoot specifically to then try to get it in galleries? Yeah. How was that? Did you already have relationships with people with galleries, uh, or how no, did that happen? No, yeah, that, that was that was good old door knocking. Yeah. Hey, you know, uh, I, I and again, therein lies you have something different to show them, mm -hmm. because you know, while the subject matter uh, may be the same that everyone's shooting, how you're shooting it yeah. differently uh, makes all the difference in the world. So um, that's where I started to, you know, um, find my my voice mm -hmm. um, and people that, that I was inspired by, um, like Massimo Vitale um, and Slim Aarons. So I started seeing this, this my feed kind of going that way as far as how I was shooting, um, my, 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 stone, my tone, my style. Um, and that's where I just started to make it my own and going like, okay, oh, I'm starting to see like what similarities I'm, I'm having these influences, like, like every artist you have these influences. Um, but then you, you own it and you start to create your own style. Yeah, and did you have success in the fine art section? Yeah, um, and that's where you know I, I then was uh, started to make more and more connections as far as people were, were buying stuff and then it was a friend of a friend would, would contact me and I started doing some corporate installations and um, doing basically private sellers um, you know, in Hollywood and in Malibu. People would just buy directly from me. So then I stopped, um, I kind of, pull back from doing the galleries and I was just doing um, private purchases. I just found it was, it was a better uh, better option and, and less overhead as far as. Yeah. Have, have you done anything with Paul Octavius's new app, Pulp Pulp? No, no, I haven't. Yeah. Not yet. Uh, yeah. yeah. Sounds like a really cool yeah, yeah, platform cool to be able to sell prints. Absolutely. Check it out if you haven't checked it out yet. Pulp Pulp. Um, but yeah, so going from doing fine art stuff, wit, how did you make the shift to then actually trying to get clients and booking out commercial work? Yeah. So uh, while I was an actor, I was also in town doing, as an actor does, does any number of jobs, yeah. whether it was uh, you know, uh, working with public relations um, teams, I was uh, working in production uh, at Sony Pictures. So I, during those, those years, um, I was making uh, a lot of connections, a lot of friends. Uh, who at this point now that uh, I've changed careers, yeah. they already trusted me as a person. Um, and hey, Pete shoots for, oh, I've seen some of his stuff. You know, let's bring him in. Yeah. And that was in, in the ad agency world as well as within um, the entertainment world. So right. people, again, um, those connections that you, I made early on, people that already trusted me, knew me, um, now is in a new venture, a new career. Um, they, the, those doors were opened 
because because they already they already had uh, that personal connection with me. So yeah. Uh, so yeah, that was that was it, and that was also about the time that uh, Instagram started to uh, about five years ago uh, started to grow, and and that then changed my career incredibly. Um, yeah. Can you talk a bit more about that? Yeah. Uh, so I saw early on the the opportunity to to um, share your work w with a vast audience very quickly. Um, where those traditional photographers that, that I knew that I was talking about before were all saying, um, oh, you know, what filter are you going to put on that, Pete? Like, oh, you know, you, you, you gram your food, gram yeah. your food, um, hashtag it. And, um, I, but, but, I, but I knew, and, and I had that uh, kind of foresight to say, this is, this is a new way for someone to personally get in contact w with a photographer, have a personal relationship with me and what I'm doing. Um, and to be visually stimulated. So people started following me because they enjoyed, you know, my sunsets at the pier. They enjoyed um, the, that California lifestyle that I was living. And, and uh, at the time I was also starting to do a little bit of traveling. So uh, I was working with an NGO in Malawi and um, on that trip, um, immediately I, I saw a whole new avenue as far as um, travel photography and, and being able to to take that this now audience with me, um, and I also saw it as as a great opportunity um, for good, because uh, while well, I was staying at an orphanage in Malawi and playing um, soccer with one of the kids, and I just took a quick photo yeah. and uh, shared it, and the kid's shoes were just like pulled apart, you know, and he was as he was kicking the ball up yeah. in the air, and shared it on on uh, social and I shared it on Instagram. And um, immediate, and, and I, I think I mentioned in the, in the uh, captions that um, the captions something about you know playing soccer with the boys out here, but man, they really could use some new shoes. Uh, immediately, people are in comments. How can I get him shoes? How, wh where can I donate? Oh, yeah. Because they had a personal connection with me. They knew that this, what was happening, was real. That that I was having this experience, and they were sharing it with me. So this wasn't that um, the the African kid with the flies, you know ad that comes on TV right, where yeah. you're going like, oh, that's sad, but there's no true, uh, you know, breaking through that fourth wall yeah. of his personal connection with that. But here you had people with their phones laying in bed at night or whatever, going like, oh, pizza, pizza, Malau. oh, oh, look at this kid, you know, and it was yeah. a, it was a real personal connection. So that also um, opened up on the fine art side because that same personal connection I'm talking about there, well, now all of a sudden somebody wanted my photo in their house. Mm -hmm because they, they knew me, right. they, they felt like they knew me, yeah. they, they yeah. trusted me, um, and they trusted the experiences and the traveling that I was doing. So that, um, that started to grow that industry as well. Um, and I also started getting calls straight from uh, creative directors, art directors. Um, straight through Instagram, or finding you on Instagram? Finding me on Instagram. Um, you know, and uh, one, one particular job was um, I shot for a Toyota Prius. I shot their uh, entire, international print campaign um, based on the creative director at Saatchi, followed me on Instagram, yeah. found me and wow. said, hey, this guy would be great to shoot this campaign. Um, so I remember when I went in for that general meeting and um, he's got books all the way up, you know, right. everybody, target percent of books, books, books. And I'd never sent him a book, never did anything. You know, here I was having this yeah. meeting with him, he's talking about the project. And um, I'm just going, this is, this is a new world. This is a new world and that's where from their point of view, they 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 were looking for a certain style that that wasn't um, a traditional style. Uh, it wasn't shot traditionally, and because of that, they're looking outside the market, looking outside their their mm -hmm. their circle. Um, so yeah, I mean, th those are the kind of things that that these days, as far as being hired as a commercial photographer, the the old uh, avenues are slowly but surely yeah. closing. It just shows what we were talking about this last night, but just it's almost like your um, your member card, your elite status, just having that strength of a following yeah. where it just gives you instant clout, instant credibility, and right. like, oh, wow, he's he's somebody, even right. though, I, I mean, it's like, exactly. could not be, but like all of a sudden now you are. Yeah, you know? and and on the other side of that coin, there's um, there's been some horror stories about, um, you know, people getting in over their head. Yeah. Um, who you know were maybe 
thought of to be uh, more advanced than they were. Yeah. You know, um, so I think those there's the uh, the, the double edged sword sometimes totally. with that where. Um, I always say you, you either, uh, you, you always pay your dues. You either pay your dues before you make it, or you pay your dues after you make it. Right. The difference between paying your dues after you make it is you do it in front of 500,000 people on Instagram yeah. or, whatever, or, or, or wherever it is. Um, so always a good uh, lesson to yeah. kind of think about that. Totally, what are, what are some in the process of just becoming where you are, what do you feel like are some lessons that if you could go back and talk to your young Pete self, yeah. um, what would you tell yourself in terms of do this or don't do this, or just some maybe a lesson you've learned in the way? Yeah, um, that's a good question. Uh, something I should probably dwell about at night, yeah. later at night. <laughs> uh, no, I think that um, definitely there is, in, in, in Instagram is, is it itself is an interesting um, medium and, and beast and I think it's going to be studied as far as its its impact on culture yeah. for some time uh, because there's a there's a celebrity aspect to it which like you talked about but there's also with that comes comes um, the that weariness of why is why is this person contacting me or why is yeah. this person talking to me and 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 like you talked about before it's like opens doors but on the other side it also closes you off to, to some experiences because you know you're worried about what is this what's this person's angle what, right. what what are they trying here and I think for that I've been burned a couple times by people that I thought were like oh cool man this guy wants to go shoot or what you know the guy you know has got this cool project and then you know they start talking about well you know we'd love for you to mention on your feed and and do that and you got like oh okay it wasn't like really all about yeah. that so you just you, you know you, you become too trusting sometimes, um, but I'm also community is a big part of of my Instagram feed, and it's also a big part of, of me. I, I I do enjoy people, and I enjoy bringing people together and the community side to it. So, um, where I know a lot of other um, higher level, high number Instagrammers that won't even go to Insta meets and photo walks anymore because it just becomes a dog and pony show about about them, and it makes right. them feel uncomfortable. Um, on the other side, for me, I, I feel like it's a, awesome opportunity to bring people together and yeah there are going to be you know five percent or whatever that is that they are always going to be in it for the wrong reasons but that shouldn't stop you from um from continuing to bring people together and yeah be a voice uh, how how has instagram really shaped what you do or how has instagram shaped the way that you're approaching photography and having to like really shoot intentionally to like have constant work to be posting. Yeah, um, you know, I, I, I've I've found for me for, for my Instagram feed and, and for the way that 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 my I, I you know you do curate the way I want to curate that it, it's it's real time it's real time storytelling for me uh, real time as in I, I want to keep if I'm in a location I want to be posting about that location I want to be sharing what I'm doing there um, and rather than that, um, wh where I know there are a lot of feeds going these days, which is just the best, most amazing, epic image every time, mm -hmm. you know, over and over and over again. And I start to lose n the person's soul in that. Mm -hmm. I don't, I, I, I forget who they are. It's just amazing images for likes, yeah. you know, rather than sharing moments uh, visually or yeah. sharing moments seeming in the captions about who, who that person is. Um, so that's something that I try to do uh, with it. And I think that's, um, for me, what, what Instagram was originally created for and why it was successful is because there were people sharing personal, um, personal stories right. through, through images. Um, and I, yeah, and I think that for me, I, as, as a photographer now, I, I've used Instagram to become a better photographer because mm -hmm. uh, while I talked about Massimo Vitale and Peter Beard and uh, yeah, Slim Aarons, I'm finding those people uh, in, in young new photographers as well, like people that I follow. And I go, wow, this guy's got a great eye. Like, um, he looks at things totally differently. And, and, and that helps shape me. Yeah. And, and wow, I wonder what I would do you know, if, if, I, if I shot with that same kind of feel, or if yeah. I tried to shoot with that feel, what would my image look like? And, and I think that that's something that having that, that vast array of, of raw talent at, at your fingertips is, is really good. And, for the people that, that you know, kind of stay in their circles and don't reach out to, to grow, I, I think they're doing a detriment to their career mm -hmm. and, and photography in general. Um, you know, I wrote something recently about um, 
about kind of everyone's a photographer now. Um, I, and um, in the piece I wrote, I mentioned the fact that it's okay for me. Like everyone can call themselves a photographer, and they are. They all have stories to tell. Yeah. You know, everyone. Uh, but now we as the professionals have to differentiate ourselves with, with the images that we take. You know, why is that image better? Why are we being paid that amazing yeah. day rate? You know, why would I, am I gonna license that image from you if um, my, my nephew's running around with uh, 5D and taking shots too? Like, well, he, he's t- he'll give it to me. Yeah. Um, so we have to do a, a service of, of educating as well as performing and, and, and showing them why we're professionals and up in our game. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's definitely something that has 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 shifted for me um, as far as Instagram professionally looking at it and professionally following uh, along. Do you um, like in the day to day? How are you posting every day? I, I try to. Yeah, I, I try to absolutely. And if you have Wi-Fi or <laughs> exactly. data, which exactly. not always the case. But. Yeah, um, but do you? go out with a goal in mind of trying like do you do you have forethought into like what you're going to try to capture for the day no you know and and that's something that you know whether it's the cameras we're able to bring around with us now or the 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 iphone i think it opened that up for me and opened up my eye to capturing real moments um in in a beautiful way Mm -hmm. and i think that because of that 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 for me is is my feat i don't know what i'm going to shoot today but um, I usually post at the end of the day, so I'll kind of go through my stuff and be like, oh, I really like this. So I'm just constantly shooting. I'm not setting up for right. a specific shot that I think will be a great photo for Instagram. I'm just shooting my moments mm-hmm. during the day, and then um, at the end of the day, I'll kind of go through and edit it. And that's that's uh, the other side of Instagram for me is, is you, become, you, you become an art director, and you become uh, public relations, and you become an editor, and um, you know, as well as the photographer and yeah. a stylist. You, you do all these things in this whole little mini world that, that you're creating, this mini job. Everything is like a mini job, you look at it that way. Uh, so I learn things about myself and my own shooting, like, oh wow, you know, I, you know, I, I just inherently always, and rule of thirds giving me my, uh, you know, my subject right up front. Well, um, you know, I'm looking at that now and I'm going like, well, I need to be more aware of that in, in what I'm doing tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So while I'm not going out to shoot something specific, now my composition, I'm going to be okay. Today, I want to, I want, I want to, I want to play with that a bit. Um, so I think that that's that's again this interesting world of, of learning this new type of photography because um, these images that we're taking now, and so the, a lot of the reasons I'm getting hired for um, some of the, the digital jobs are, are because of this uh, POV UGC style of shooting. So definitely within the travel and luxury industry they they want images to be dirty now they they want lived in yeah um and it's still shot with a professional camera it's still shot you know it needs to be used uh across the mediums but um the image isn't that same lifestyle image or same um, property image that that they've wanted in the past oh man yeah hey thanks (laughs) for your time where can people find your work and your site and yeah. then uh, Instagram. PCHPRO, P-R-O dot com is my website. And then uh, Instagram is uh, Pete Halverson, P-E-T-E, P-E-T-E, yeah, uh, H-A-L-V-O-R-S-E-N. Or you can just put in Pete H in the search and um, it'll probably come up. It'll come up. It'll come up. It'll come up. Uh, but yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, man. Well, thanks tons. Well, to meet you and hang out. Likewise. Orange County next. Done. Thanks.